what would happen if we made a podcast but didn't actually have a topic and instead just chatted for a while with John? This is Dive, a podcast about where Google searches take us. Tweet us at HDDive, leave us some feedback or an iTunes review if you so choose. And in this episode, we're just chatting about life with our good buddy, John. Let's dive in. For a long time, I was thinking of a, I don't want to say it. Somebody's going to steal it and build it before I do. Say it. <laughs> I wanted to build like a recipe application. Do you know, do you know GitHub at all? Yeah. Mm -mm. So GitHub is a code repository uh, where you can, a lot of times it's public code and people can branch off of it and make create their own vor versions. It's called a fork uh, or they can make pull requests to like update the code to fix like issues or something like that. Or you can submit bug issues, that kind of thing. It's kind of just like a community where code is distributed, published and like updated. So I was thinking a recipe like system where that is available. Cause like if I make a recipe and I give it to you, Dan, you're probably going to change something, whether it be like the level of salt or probably, like yeah. add an additional herb or something like that. So I was thinking it should be a recipe app where you can make your own recipes and store them in a, you know, user-friendly way. But then you could also send your recipes to people and they could create their own like forks of that. Mm. Um, I don't know. I and you don't have to deal with the bullshit uh, story, a thousand word story to open up every article that has a recipe in it. You have to scroll, 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 scroll to the bottom. Have yeah. We talked about how annoying that I find that. <laughs> it's one of my I pet peeves. Yeah, I just like page. I down. was born on a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Pioneer Woman has great, like, southern recipes, but they right. always have that bullshit story. Yeah. Every single one. Nikki and I joke about it all the time. It's, it's like, like, my, my kids uh, love I, this. My husband comes I, back for seconds every time. I, yep. yeah, <laughs> I used to go to my grandparents every single Wednesday from the <laughs> yeah. age of 6 to 28. <laughs> and during those times, my grandfather was relatively grumpy every single day. But when my grandmother made these chicken and dumplings, he was happy as a clam. His eyes just lit up. <laughs> My kids are notoriously picky eaters. They never eat anything I make. But this recipe, they come back for seconds every time. <coughs> yeah. So annoying. The other thing, this this came up, or I thought about this at work a long time ago because we wanted to do a, like, we were all cooking a decent amount in my office back in uh, a couple years ago. And we were like, oh, man, it would be really great to have, like, a shared recipe space. So, like, having, like, follow, like social media, but recipes. Yeah. That That's would cool. be kind of a fun thing to do. And uh, my only thought is, like, oh, yeah, I, I want to be able to, like, copy and update them very easily. <laughs> anyway, that's my million-dollar idea that... Uh, I won't do because I can't even build Dan a website. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, I was taking my friend back to Fredonia yesterday, and um, we were talking about aliens a lot on the way up. And then I thought wait, it really wait, cool. The movie? No, or like just the... aliens okay. in general. Uh, and I was because there was like some weird UFO sighting the other day, like two days ago. Really? Yeah. Near you or just in the news? No, I don't remember exactly. But um, do you not remember because you were abducted? Yes. Mm. Actually, the other day, last last week, I went out to take the How dog out. Happen, actually, to the story. <laughs> Sorry, keep, keep going. So, actually, I went outside to, to take the dog out uh, last week. And um, generally, when I let her out, if, depending on what time of night it is, I'll just pee outside. All uh -huh. right. And then I was peeing, and I caught something out of the left-hand side of my, my eye. And I turned, and there was the biggest, like, meteor thingy, shooting star, whatever, like, flying very low. Oh. What? And it was massive. It, like, <clears throat> it was so low that it disappeared over my my neighbor's house. It was that low. Damn. What? And it was super bright. I saw one of those recently. That's There's crazy. a video. I don't remember where it was, but it was like a meteor breaking apart, a like fiery flame, like huge, huge in the sky. This was just a couple weeks ago. 
It was crazy. It was uh, Christmas Eve. It was Christmas Eve. Damn. And I was like, whoa. And so, so I was cool. trying to look up to see if there, like a, if there was like a meteor, <laughs> yeah, if there was like a meteor shower or something, but didn't say there was. It was crazy. Huh. Yeah. Damn. Anyway, so I was thinking of this uh, this story. <clears throat> we were talking about aliens and whether or not they exist, yada, yada, yada. And then I've been watching The Expanse, mm. and I finished the latest season, which was very oh, good. Jesus. And uh, I thought of this really cool story about um, the, like, the kind of, like, the impetus for the story itself isn't what the... Uh, story is about but the story is about like take earth a few hundred years in the future we've somehow discovered another solar system that has a civilized life form on it <clears throat> mm -hmm. and in the midst of this instead of attacking everybody we found ways to communicate and everybody decided like okay these we're gonna meet this is gonna happen and society starts to change because of that idea that we've reached alien life and everything com comes into question, blah, blah, blah. But what happens is the majority of both species get wiped out because of illness that we honestly couldn't detect. <clears throat> and then the story is actually about what society on Earth is like following that. Mm. And so it's not post-apocalyptic, but it is like a game changer. And, and like the story kind of represents like the Tower of Babel, you know that story. Mm -hmm. I always so, thought it was pronounced Babel. It, it's both. It doesn't matter. Depends on whether you're from New York or not. True. <laughs> and so, um, with this, it's a lot of religious factions have taken over control of whatever resembles the countries on Earth anymore, mm. because they see it as like a a godsend that we aren't supposed to try and reach out to other planets. But then the, right. the minority of the planet at this point is trying to figure out how to move on because of all the loss and, like, yeah. to resolve these things. But <clears throat> you don't talk about it as if it is because it was in the past. You know, like, say it was, like, 50 or 100 years earlier. Mm -hmm. But they keep referring to the Babel incident. Um, and that's kind of what changed it. And it's about, like, overcoming the fears of certain things and recovering from loss and stuff like that. So that's... Hmm. I, I like that idea. I, I think it would also be cool to not even have the alien... Like, are you saying the alien part isn't... It's more subtle? Like, they refer to it as a Babel event and the reader doesn't know what that is for, like... Yeah. Most of it. Yeah, yep. that's really cool. Because they stopped. Like, they did it, they fucked up, and they yeah. totally ignored it from now on. Like, it, we can't go back. We can't do this. We can't contact them. And it's almost a myth at this point. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Did you... There was a show on some network channel called like Beyond Human or Becoming. I was Becoming that? Human. Yeah, was it? That? That's yeah, a video game. That. Detroit Becoming Human oh, or something. Yeah. So oh, no, 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 not that. Almost not Human. That. Almost Human. Almost, almost human. human. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, I haven't seen it though. There is. So it was kind of like a fine detective sci-fi show, like relatively well done, all that stuff. But they had this hint of a, <clears throat> I don't want to spoil it, but they hint at something larger in like one of the last episodes or something. It was like three till the end and they referenced something that just made me and like my little brother was watching it just go like, wait, what? Holy shit. Are you, what? What is happening? This is a thing. So it was really cool. I, I love stories that kind of do that like there's a larger piece of the world that you, you don't, don't know about it because the rest of the world doesn't really like acknowledge it very well that that right. can be like a fun little world building opener thing yeah and and uh like the expanse does a really good job of adding what are, what are those expanse. what are those things that they do in star trek where they say one line and then there's like a literary term for it where they say one line to cover up a glaring hole in the logic of something and so <clears throat> right Oh, shit, I can't think of what it's called, but call Zach. Yeah, he'll know. <laughs> yeah. But they but they have it so that they say like, okay, anybody who is living in the belt or anybody who's living on Mars, all they have to do is take um, gravity drugs, <clears throat> and it increases their bone density temporarily so they can survive one G. Right. And like those are the things they think of a whole lot. And then in this past season, they introduced like foreign um, sicknesses to other oh, planets. Cool. 
Um, but it's not like in the way that I, I'm talking about with this. Like this was like just a epidemic, you know, like it, it yeah. literally like almost <clears throat> like say like 60 to 70 percent of people just wiped out. Yeah. Um, but they do a really good job of like saying that these people who have lived and been born in the belt have never even experienced any G like zero G one G yeah, whatever. Yeah, like yeah. they're literally just floating in space with mag boots. And so they yeah. did a really cool job of kind of figuring that out. That a lot. reminds me of the whole idea of like you go somewhere and then you're wiped out by a disease you couldn't even have imagined or predicted. I think that happened in, was it war of the worlds? Where it was like, yeah, they all died. They come they, here, oh, yes, because yeah. like the Earth basically killed spoiler them off. Alert. Oh, uh, yeah, this spoiler alert. Sorry, hundred year old. <laughs> <laughs> but the the retelling, the one with Tom Cruise, as much as a whack job as he is, like mm -hmm. that movie is so intense. I remember watching it just that being movie like was very, very pulled good, in yeah. so much into that movie. But the whole idea of going somewhere and then essentially just dying because of all of the immunities that we have built up over the years that yeah, the yeah. newcomers don't have. It's, I mean, it's happened in history when we travel to different countries. But that's the thing that, like, guaranteed they're not going to be able, even if we ever made contact with alien life, we would never be able to meet them face to face. Never. Like, you couldn't. It's like uh, in Galaxy Quest. Is there air? You don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> except there's parasites and all these organisms that floating around that we would have killed anything else, but we're fine because we've lived and it. It's, and it's just by chance that we're carbon based. So, mm -hmm. like, technically, life could, on any other planet, could have formed using other elements. That's the crazy part to me, is to, is we could have life, essentially, or, you know, sentient beings in the universe that we can't even see or comprehend or even understand because they're yep. composed of things that we don't even have any no knowledge exists. of. We and we can't see exist. or feel or touch. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a, a, an organism, I think, I think this is as big of a thing as I'm as I think it is. I think it is as I think it is. Um, <laughs> Sounds right. It's Makes sense. It lives in those hot jets underwater. Yes. It, oh, like in the trenches? In the Mariana's yeah, Trench? It yeah. It doesn't exist on carbon. It's like sulfur-based or something like that. Like, it, it's composed not of sulfur, but it consumes almost exclusively uh, sulfur, which is strange for... They said those things will survive anything. <laughs> yeah. they'll essentially survive like the end of times because they don't yeah. they could breathe in any toxic chemical that the earth emits Pretty did big. you watch the movie life uh jake gyllenhaal he's mm -hmm. in space I no it was jake good? gyllenhaal uh it's that was a solid three and a half out of five uh but the whole thing is like they find this organism and they reanimate it Ooh. And it grows like super, super fast and it's ultra intelligent and it can survive in all. It's basically in space. It can survive outside sure the spaceship. Venom? I think it's called Life. I didn't watch Venom. It's like a sci fi horror movie. But basically, it, it just keeps growing and growing and growing. And uh, I don't want to ruin it, but <laughs> <laughs> bad things happen, essentially. You, you know what your book reminded me of, Cody, was uh, Three Body Problem, your book idea. Yeah, I've been meaning to pick get that back up. into that because yeah. the first one was really good. Yeah, the first one, it, it reminds, like, it's not the same, but kind of like that, that, like, contact between. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. When you the first brought one, that book up years ago, I wanted to get into it. Yeah, I think it was, I think it was just barely a year ago or something, because I read it on one of the trips to London. Is it easy to pick up for someone who doesn't read a whole lot and is kind of out of the literary game for a little bit? Like I haven't read yeah. some deep books in a long time, so my um my goal for this year is to just read a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Like oh, uh, I probably read like I don't know five books this year, not on Audible. I mean, Audible is like thirty, you know. <clears throat> but um, I I have a lot of books that I keep buying because I love buying books, but I haven't read them. Yeah, yeah. Same. I I got this book on. Oh, I've got it right next to me. It's not a fiction book it's about uh coding it's called head first digital patterns or head first design patterns uh, it's nice. about um it's a crazy artwork if you look at this it looks like straight out of the 90s but uh it's like object oriented or object based coding stuff mm -hmm. i haven't even cracked it open yet but i'm trying to get into that and learn some coding this year nice 
I'm also going to continue to lose weight. I'm down 15 pounds. Oh, shit. Nice there we go. Nice. This is just a show about our New Year's resolutions, I guess. St still fat as fuck, but... <laughs> <laughs> Trending downwards. That's what I you want. I don't tend to, like, actually make resolutions. I don't either. Mm -mm. But, like, I, mm -mm. but, like, reading more is not a resolution. That's just saying, like, don't just turn the TV on. Like, read for an hour a day. Yeah. Yeah. Get out of your habits. Get out of your routine. Yeah. That's kind of my resolution in quotes. Last what last year, mine was to be more productive with my time, and I did that. Like, I spent a shit ton of time redoing rooms in my house and, like, coming up with a bunch of ideas. Like, we did a lot of stuff with the podcast in the last year. And so, like, I felt good about that. Yeah. And then I was just a fat, muscleless piece of shit. <laughs> I, I'm that, but without the fat part. <laughs> What are you up to I this year, got, John? I like, rubber bones. <laughs> I, I really want to... I've been... I, I want to learn Mandarin. Because mm. that's the only way I'll be able to communicate with my... Wife. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's something that, like, I've been trying to work on. It's really hard to get me to do it on my own time kind of like reading it just falls between the cracks yeah you should just tell her to only speak to you in mandarin you'll have to figure it out for the rest <laughs> of your so, life <laughs> I've been, like I, sometimes we'll just have a sentence and i'll be like oh how do you say that like i'll pick a thing out of the sentence and like try and learn how to say it and like the, it it's helpful it's hard for her to like transition because she's so used to speaking to me in english that like thinking about saying something to me in mandarin is kind of like a chore you know she has oh to... i have to speak my native yeah, language yeah. <laughs> no it's just that she won't even think about it and like when i'm when i'm like hey can you teach me something in mandarin she's like what what do you want to learn i'm like i don't even know how the language works like you just like, have, you have how to... to structure a sentence would be a good way to start <laughs> so like it's it's kind of like she's not a teacher and because it's native to her it's not like super easy to just dive into it and she just kind of gets lost in all the things that i don't know kind of uh so it's been more on me to ask her like oh how do you say this or how do you say this or how do you say this and like i don't always think about it but anyway the whole point of this is i want to go and actually take a class to get at least the basics down um like i have okay pronunciation and i understand how the different tones work um <clears throat> but getting starting to learn like where is the library and that kind of thing like i just need to get some vocabulary donde esta la biblioteca obviously exactly. yeah do you do the learnings on duolingo or an app or like what have you done so far yeah yeah i, I have memorized which is what i was using i've heard duolingo was good um I used it for German for a while, and that was fun. Yeah, so my <clears> problem is, like, I just... I, I don't, like, pick up my phone very much, honestly. Like, so getting... it would ha I would have to have, like, a routine where I regularly do it. Yeah. Um, in order to work on it. I think I just need, like, homework. I, I need somebody to tell me what I should be doing mm -hmm. in order to, like, actually get it done. So anyway, that's kind of like my big one. Um, I always am kind of like keeping up to date with my weight and diet stuff. That's kind of a thing that's always on the back of my mind. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, nice. reading is a good one. I haven't, when I, before I moved out here to LA, the only way I could read is if I took like an hour before I went to sleep. That was the only time. I would just like get ready a little early, get in bed, and then read for like an hour. That I always find that if I read before I go to bed, I will stay up later. Oh, I'm the opposite. It'll put me right to sleep. Cannot put me to sleep. I am like wired when I read, so I have to like do it when I get home from work. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. I need to make a list of things that I want to do in 2020. I've been baking a lot more. Or Light like, it up. Blaze it. 420. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> like... I, I my buddy came down for uh, the holidays and he brought me some sourdough starter. So I've got some starter. Mm. Nice. Uh, One of the reasons why I'm late right now is because I just made pizza dough. 
It's rising. Oh, nice. Yeah, from scratch, straight up. So I'll like let you know how it goes, because I don't know. Starter or active? Uh, instant yeast, because it's the recipe is like a one-day, same-day thing. Mm-hmm. There's other recipes that have different types for overnight, mm-hmm. but it's my first go at it. That's awesome. We'll see how it yeah, goes. one of the things I want to do is you can use a sourdough as like a base for it, sourdough starter as a base for it instead of yeast mm. culture. Mm-hmm. So one of the things I want to do is like there's so many things that I can just throw starter dough or uh, sourdough starter into instead of yeast, like bread making, pizza dough, donuts bagels all kinds of stuff anything that rises basically you can do a replacement where you use sourdough do they take on that tangy kind of taste though um they can you can use stuff to neutralize it like usually like in scones i have a recipe that calls for sour cream Mm -hmm. uh, and you just do like baking soda uh baking powder to kind of neutralize it a bit Hmm. interesting I would love to get into bread making, but then I go to the store and realize I can spend two ninety nine and get some of the best bread ever <laughs> with no work at all. So I, that's the only reason why I haven't gotten into it. There's something great about just like fresh baked bread, though. It is. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just so and, good. And, and the nice thing is like this culture, like you can keep it in the fridge and have little maintenance on it like once a week. Or you can keep it out and it'll be really active. Like bakeries are able to bake so much bread because they just leave the starter dough out hmm. i keep calling it starter dough that's not what it's called sourdough starter <laughs> <laughs> they and you just feed it like uh like twice a day or something and it doubles in size every like six to eight hours that kind of thing so you just like can crank out bread um so having this available like bread isn't hard to make like it's kind of you have to be home but me yeah. working from home, like, I can just start it in the morning, knead it a bit, let it rise, go back to work, you know, knead it a little bit, throw it in the oven, and then I'll have fresh bread, like, on a regular basis. So that's kind of what I want to do is be more active about producing my own things when it's convenient. It just sucks that it's not good for you in any way. I, I, I mean, moderation. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. I guess it's better than baking desserts all the time and eating those all the time. Yeah, and there there are some people who are very against carbs as a whole, and it, there's not great things about carbs, but I think the like mass-produced stuff is just it, it's a it's a different ball game. Like I know macronutritional dieting <laughs> is kind of where I fall in the in the mix of dieting i don't think you should really eliminate anything super crazy i think just moderation works yeah i mean when you boil it down it's all just calories in calories out regardless of what you're putting in that yeah that's unless you're like a bodybuilder an athlete you know yeah for the average person and like there's definitely differences between people's bodies and how they process that food but for me like there's nothing that makes me gain a ton of weight besides just eating garbage (laughs) like day in and day out like that's that's what does it for me i i've been eating cake for the last week and i put on a couple of pounds but as soon as i stop eating my birthday cake and (laughs) like go back to my normal home cooked meal style dieting i will lose that weight pretty quickly do you weigh yourself like every day no, but like I, my belt is right on the like, it's it's perfectly aligned to calibrate my my belly size. <laughs> Man, my thing is I just need to <clears throat> be more active. Um, yeah. It, I mean, granted, I'm 30 now, so it might be a little different, but like I tend to drop weight more if I'm just active. It doesn't matter what I eat doesn't yeah. matter you know i was taking a lot of calories with beverages though but for the last two months all i've had with the exception of a couple of times is water that's such a killer like those wa- uh like liquid calories you can go through them so fast i am a mm-hmm. juice fiend yeah yeah Confirmed. so like i could go through like gallons of it a day if i wanted to <laughs> yeah but back when i was a three sport athlete a decade ago it didn't matter <laughs> right a decade ago oh god fucking almost 12 years ago yeah yeah that's really all it is for me too 
I miss that. That's the problem when you grow up, move away. Uh, it's hard to find friends to do stuff with active stuff because you have to join yeah. a team or you have to. So you even do have the option, thing. though, of going and doing like I do have the option. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. There's nothing around me within even an hour's drive that I could do with people. Really that sucks. I live in the middle of nowhere. And so like there's no community leagues. There's nothing like that unless you want to play like beer softball. Mm hmm. And so, like, nobody's – I, you know, for for years I've been saying, like, does anybody want to play tennis? Because I used to play tennis a lot, and nobody mm. wants to play. But there's also not a lot of courts that we can go to either. Mm. At least that's a sport that's easy to pick up. Like, that's a lifetime yeah. sport, you know? So it's you... that and golf. Those two you can play forever. Yeah. And I've never played golf. Yeah, you just got to find the right people to do it with. And golf isn't really active. That's the other problem. Unless you mm -hmm. walk, and that's no fun. Half the fun yeah, of golf is driving the cart. <laughs> half in the bag. Cody, you got to build a court on your property. I know. You got to, yeah. I'm going through, I, I told Nikki this morning, I'm making a list in one of my field notebooks that of all the things that I'm doing to the house or plan to do to the house and like pricing out what it's going to cost mm -hmm. or like how much it has cost. That seems fun to me. I don't know why, but like having a journal of all the things that I've done to my house and are, are, am going to do to my house just seems super fun to no, me. No, that's great. I look forward to that. I'm really excited. We're going to start house shopping in the next six months or so. Well, we're house shopping starting now, but hoping we can get one in the next six months. That would be awesome. When's your lease up? Uh, May, I think. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So we have a, have a deadline there. So much in the last, like, three years. So much, dude. So much. <laughs> yep. From the age of 23 to 28, I moved every single year at least once or at least twice a year. What? Wow. Yeah. That's because crazy. for the times that I was in college, um, I had to relocate every single semester because I worked through the school year. Uh huh. But they wouldn't let me live in the building that I lived in. Uh so like during breaks I would have to move every bit of my stuff and that's then so move annoying. it back again. And then when I was twenty seven, I moved Ooh. into Nikki's house. And then we got married and we bought this house and then we moved and I haven't moved since. And hopefully it won't move for a very long time. I don't plan on moving ever. Not with that project notebook. The, so like the plan is to like make this place a place I never want to leave. Yeah. And then when we pay the house off, we'll buy like a small lake house or a tiny home on a lake. Yes. Mm. There we go. Fucking lake house. I want one so bad. But they're so expensive around here now. Yeah, everyone wants them. So back in the 1990s, uh, you could buy a lake house on any of the Finger Lakes for dirt cheap. Nobody wanted to live there. Ugh. And then in the late 90s, um, a bunch of people from like Long Island, New Jersey and all that came up and they bought all the properties. And so now they've like made their own housing bubble on these lakes. And you can buy a shithole for like $500,000. Jeez. But if you have like a tiny home or a house on wheels, like a trailer, uh, you don't have to pay property taxes. Hmm. And so that's like the cheap way to do it. Well, you have to find somewhere to park it, though, right? No, like you can own the property, but you don't. Oh, have you don't to pay, have to pay tax like, on the house. You don't have to pay tax on the house for being on the property. You're just paying for oh. the land. Okay, interesting. I thought the land was where the property tax comes from, like it's the value of the land it's, itself. It's what you do with the land around here. Huh, so, like, if it's just empty, an empty lot, like it's less than it would be if you had a residential property. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, that's the dream. I just want to freaking own a house. Yeah, well, you guys are going to spend an arm and a leg anyway. Yeah, yeah. And it's not even going to be our forever home. It's just going to be a starter home. So do you think that's worth it to have a starter home rather than... I, I've been trying to figure this out because I think... I don't know if I want to deal with it a bunch. Of, like, it would be great to own our own home. But I don't know if I think it's worth it if we're just going to move in, like, one year, two years, five years. Like, I don't know how that would work. I wouldn't, but they they are in a good spot to do that. Yeah, the thing for us is we know, I mean, the economy is going to take up its ups and downs. There's going to be hills and valleys for sure and, and housing prices and the market and everything else. And assuming North Korea doesn't bomb us or anything like that, we know that we're going to make money off of this no matter what like there's just no way the house is going to decrease in value we're either going to break even or we're going to make money off of it 
if we hold it for at least five years or three or five years. Mm -hmm. So that's our thought. And plus, like, we've just, we want to start putting money into something that we own and having our own space. It's less like the economical purchase, more the mental and, you know, this is our home. This is what we're building. This is what we own. Our walls, our roof, no neighbors. Yeah. You know, it was a really hard thing for me to get used to was the idea that I could do what I wanted on it. That's the crazy part because I always have so, this thought in my head where it's like, if I'm being loud, I, oh, yeah. neighbors are going to hear me. I have to, you know, I have to be quiet. Yeah. Being courteous was, of others. Uh, even like damaging things to do other things. Mm -hmm. I had to put, I had to put in a mailbox. Right. Um, and I felt like I was doing something wrong by digging, by digging a hole in my front yard close to the road. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, this is mine. Like I can do whatever I want here. Yep. <laughs> like it doesn't, it just felt so weird. Yeah. It's so um, freeing. When I had to run these cables from downstairs to up here so I could run the hard line. Like I mm. put holes in my floor and I was like, oh my God, like, uh, <laughs> like I'm going to get in trouble for this. I was like, nope, I own this. This is mine. Yeah, no security <laughs> I mean, deposit. I can literally do whatever I want with it. And then when that homeowner's insurance thing came up, I was like, oh my God, this is the worst. And they're like, pay the deductible and we'll fix it. Yeah. So and yeah. they're, they're not going to end up doing the carpets, which sucks. But um, yeah. I have somebody coming in tomorrow to estimate what it's going to cost to put down uh, like that paneled laminate hardwood, like mm -hmm. not real hardwood, but the, the watertight one. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the library and the hallway are going to be like a dark, like a walnut color. Hmm. Nice. So went through and they're going to paint hopefully next week. And then, um, and then I'm going to start on the bookshelves. Nice. So we, we rearranged Aiden's room and brought that Dan, you remember that old Brown desk that I redid that was down yeah. the way yep. back. Yeah. We moved that into Aiden's room. And so he has two closets with bifold doors mm -hmm. and we took the bifold doors out and we put the desk like right in the closet. And so it's like, it looks built in now. It's cool. Nice. It like it oh, fit you your room. Yeah, it looks it looks like almost perfect. There's like an inch on either side of it. It's cool. That's awesome. I'm surprised you could get that desk out of that room and downstairs. Oh the thing is a beast. It was so hard. I feel like they don't make stuff like that anymore. No, they <laughs> don't. Like, my, my grandparents bought it. Thousand pound desk. My grandparents bought it. Damn. Like they bought it new? Uh, I think so. Or wow. maybe it was used then, but like they actually bought two desks and I have both of them. Nice. Mm. It's really so nice. I, really cool. I redid both of them. Wow. Dan, you seem like a standing desk kind of guy. Uh, I don't have one at home, but I have one at work, and I don't stand as much as I should, but I like it. It's really nice to like sit all day. I have, an ones. I have a electric standing desk at work. Yeah, it's really nice. that's what I have. That's right. um, you like to stand and wave your hands. Yeah, yes. it's true. Yep. Uh, I like to start my day standing and mm. finish my day sitting. Mm. I go in just small spurts. <laughs> I'm like an hour at a time. <laughs> slowly collapse down like, the, like pressure of work by or lunch, the desk an inch every by hour lunch time i'm like oh. <laughs> <laughs> but i never have meetings in the mornings and uh, so i i go in and i have eight to or eight thirty to like 11 ish where i'm just getting work done and then people start to come to work because the rds work from 10 to 6 and so mm -hmm. they'll come in at around 11 once they've gotten settled and they're, they're trying to talk to me at that point and so i slowly like all right well you're in here so i'll sit i guess <laughs> but yeah one more thought about houses i was just going to say is there are a ton of benefits to renting and i think we've really taken advantage of a lot of them like if something breaks you don't have to pay for it mm -hmm. but yeah we're just ready to to have our own thing and we want to get a dog, and if you have a dog, it really, really, really narrows your options of what where you can live, which pet-friendly places you can find, because everyone's trying to find them. You'll find that you won't be able to, like, travel as much if you have a dog. Yeah, yeah. But and, like, that was, I, we know it that. It out for us. It yeah. worked out for us. How so? Yeah. Like, are you just okay with that, or it's like... You're just, like, it, it slows you down a bit, like, yeah. like in a good way. Right? Yeah. Because you have something else that you look forward to, and you appreciate where you are more. Mm-hmm. And it'll make us more active, like we'll be getting out and about as well. Because right. unless we have a yard, which we hope we have a small one, but you have to take the dog places. You have to get up early. You got to, you know, take care of a, a living thing. Good starter for uh, one day having a child. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's really good things. Back. Some people are like, I meet a ton of people my age all around Boston and they're like, they're all have different perspectives on renting or owning. I yeah. hear people that say we will never buy a house ever here. 
And then I hear other people say, oh, I'm trying to buy as soon as possible. I wish I bought years ago when I could have. Yeah. Or, you know, I'm going to rent for a couple more years or I'm going to buy for now and then I'm going to move. There's no right answer necessarily, but I think for us, what we want is just our own thing. That's what it comes to. It depends on the kind of person you are too. Because you're going to want to tinker It's like, what do you value? And yeah. yeah. Like I daily we will be sitting downstairs or anywhere in our house and just go like, we have a beautiful house. I love this place. Mm-hmm. Wow. And that's like, the that's best. Just, I love it because like, there's always something I can do. And yeah, some sh- shit is really annoying. Like the amount of fucking light bulbs I've had to buy. <laughs> holy shit. It drives you nuts. <laughs> like, but also yeah. like when you put in the new light bulbs, you go like, Oh, this is great. Yeah. This, yeah, yeah. this is nice. <laughs> I really like this. Yeah. Sheen's family is very much like, not like pressuring us but like when are you guys gonna buy you know that type of thing yeah because in china renters rights is very very low whereas in california like yeah squatters rights there you can just... yeah <laughs> <So> <laughs> like, i could probably go co-op a house if i mm-hmm. wanted to <laughs> um but there's yeah so they're they're very much like you're not really a part of this bigger picture in the city you don't you don't live there until you own a place because you could just be ousted whenever mm. kind of thing. that's crazy that, that is crazy here it's the opposite yeah. completely the opposite so I, and it's i grew up like living in kind of one place most of my life i lived in one town uh and then i've just been renting ever since and i haven't I'm not the tinker type. I would love to, if I knew how to do stuff with my house, I think I would love like kind of messing around with things, but I'm not the like, oh, we could knock down this wall and turn this into a bigger room type of person. I, I don't know how to think like that. I don't know how houses work exactly. See, so, <laughs> I'm like learning. Yeah. And I yeah. don't know how houses work, but like I'm a, I'm a big picture guy. And so like, I'll say, this is what I want to do. Now I have to find yeah. all the people that would know whether or not I can do that. Mm-hmm. And so a whole I'll lot of YouTube. Around, <laughs> a lot of my friends um, do know how to do this stuff. And so I've but, like a lot of help from them, but I'm, I'm like, Oh, I want to open up that kitchen wall. And so my friend Mike was over the other day and I go, is that doable? He goes, I don't think it's a load bearing wall, but we can find out. And I was like, okay, let's knock let's it do down. That. Find out. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> no, so, to... But like you are hands over fists more handy than I like your lack of knowledge is like tenfold more than what I have. <laughs> I feel like once you have it though, like once you have the option to start pulling apart Not stuff, <laughs> you would learn. You know, you, you learn quick. Yeah, like I when I had that water damage, I did not hesitate to pound through that drywall because yeah. I knew what might be on the other side of that it wall, looked like already done it. you were waiting to kick that wall <laughs> Kinda, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah i was like all right here we go here, here's an option so, oh man like someone look- spilled a glass in the hallway and you're like <laughs> where is it <laughs> but that's the thing like there's different types of people like we are that type of person where we're gonna want to do those things other people look at their houses as just a place to stay like they don't look at it like i want to be here all the time it's it's crazy to me the number of people our age that i've met that just have a place to stay and they're always traveling they're always getting out and about they're just there to sleep they're going out to dinner every night they're super super social people i and i'm the opposite i just want a place where i can you know i can come home and want to be home every second of my day i just want to be at home like well, that's Kate's my lifestyle very, very she seems to want to do stuff all the time she is but at the same time like she always wants to be home like she yeah. loves sleeping more than any other thing in the world Nikki and she goes always like wants to be home. are we nikki's like are we boring like i don't want to go anywhere I'm yeah like, right i mean yeah we are boring but like in the best possible way yeah like yeah. i would have people to my house seven days a week yeah so right. i don't want to leave mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's also like it's hard to leave when you have two kids and a dog true true so like um, my uncle Your will say like, Hey, come out to shape. Buffalo for the weekend. And I'm like, I can't go out to Buffalo for the weekend. First of all, it's a two hour drive. Second of all, like I can't bring three people and then spend $30 a night to board my dog somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's limiting. So like the thing that I would want is I, I would love to have, I love cooking. I love cooking for people. I love like, you know, having people in the kitchen doing, Sheena and I love just like going in the kitchen and making something. And our kitchen is very small in mm-hmm. this studio apartment so it's been really hard to like cook stuff together usually like maybe 
the the oven is right behind the the sink where we do dishes. We don't have a dishwasher, so the like it's even hard to like wash dishes and cook at the same time. Um, so I, it the only thing that I want out of a of a place to live at this point is like it would be great to have an office situation, and it I but the biggest part is like a kitchen where two people like a two or three butt kitchen. Is what I want, <laughs> um, and like maybe a, a space to have some people over so that like cook food and like hang out and that kind of thing. Just like a nice, nice visiting area. Yeah, that's what I want. I want to have the spot where people come to me all the time, and so yeah, I can definitely. say, okay, go home, I'm going to bed. <laughs> I just walk in the other room and go to bed. I don't have that to Uber awesome. home. I don't have to drive home. Yeah. That's kind of the beauty of like where I live now, right? Because like you came to visit me one time in college, right? There was no place to be. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody else ever came to visit me, ever. And then, like, we had that other house, and, like, we couldn't, ha like, have anyone in there. It was 900 square feet. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's then, kind of how our apartments are, have been. Yeah. And I get this place, and I go, like, cool. So, like, when my friends come home and they want to see me, like, we have rooms that they can stay in. Yeah. We'll just, like, send my kids to a different room. Yeah. And you have beds. beds. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, you have a place, and, like, you could have, like, actual private time if you wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. And they're on the other side of the house. Mm -hmm. And so it's like their own thing. You have your own thing. They have their own, essentially, a guest suite. Yeah. I yeah, love that. That would be ideal. And then if I get a goddamn pool, Ooh. the best oh, place yeah. in the world. Like, I would, the summer will be glorious. Oh, I would, like, never, like, uh, I want, like, an outdoor shower, too. Oh, the best. So I, like, yeah. don't have to be inside ever. during. Like, I'll just wake up and, like, either hop in the pool or go take a shower outside. <laughs> love it would they you make put like a... shampoo, shampoos for pools and stuff do really? they really yeah so that your ph doesn't get messed up i've never heard of that makes sense would you uh heat the pool or would you just have it be uh heat by the sun? A hair dryer in there uh probably just like a <laughs> toaster probably just like a, a cover one of those thermal covers or whatever yeah oh is that how that ah. yeah, yeah water is really good it holds its temperature very well specific heat yeah. That's the one thing I remember from Earth Science. A specific heat of water. That's not the only thing you remember That's the only thing. Science. Well, I also remember our <laughs> teacher used to carry around a one-gallon jug of yep. essentially Kool-Aid, and it, it was red. Ugh. And whenever someone asked him what it was, he would say, this was my last student that crossed me. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I, those people who have that, like, that, like zinger ready yeah. that they tell everybody... <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. I don't want his just one was, singer. His name was Newell. His name was Newell. Uh, yep. N Newell. Bob. Bob Newell. Nope, no, that his was first his first name. name. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Yep. All right, Newell. There you go. He was a so, giant. Don't want to talk about PUBG. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just did an episode of Dive. Yeah, yeah we did. Let's just, just like put it up on Dive. <laughs> That was great. This is Dive with John. <laughs> I am Dive with John. <laughs> and we'll see you when we see you. How about that? <laughs>